you remember when William Osmond did all those egg drop challenges with random people where you have to build something to protect an egg and throw it out of a window and see if it breaks? And then Mark Rober did an egg drop challenge from space. How are we going to beat that? Yes, it's the human egg drop challenge. I'm challenging kids invent stuff. That's us. To build something to protect a human, which we're going to drop off a crane at varying heights. Only we're not going to use a real human, we're going to use the crash test dummy that I built some time ago so it doesn't get demonetised on YouTube. So I'm going to build something to protect the crash test dummy, and kids in Ben's stuff are going to build something to protect the crash test dummy that kids have designed. Crash test dummies cost a million dollars, and that's because they don't make very many, about 300 a year for the auto industry. So I decided that so I could do more dangerous things in my channel and not put myself in danger, which YouTube wouldn't like, I'd build my own crash test dummy. So I made this thing out of wood and steel and various other materials, including 3D printing. It's got joints that can dislocate in various places, and it's fully articulated. Its face is actually made of Lego, so you can see if its face would have got broken, and it does have data logging as well, so I've got two accelerometers, one in the head and one in the body, and those log to SD cards, so we can look at the graph of the data later. It's got load cells in its ribs, which work like weighing scales, and it's got guts made of stress balls, which are full of those water balls or orbies, which can get slashed and its guts can come out. I previously tested it by throwing it off my shed, which is the only thing I could really do with it, to see how it worked, and basically the dummy survived the fall okay, and then we got the data, which clearly showed it going anti-gravity, where it fell, and all of the accelerometers went anti-gravity, obviously hitting the ground is a massive spike, and then laying on its ribs eventually, which is why we've got those constant values shortly after the drop. Shopping with Jimmy B. It's a YouTube magical mystery tour. We get to go to all the best places. Secretly, because they won't let you film. We didn't get permission. Oh, okay. Oh, right, the other end. Right down there. It's wood. <laughs> Shopping with Jimmy B. As well as wood, I've also got some 3D printed parts. A quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor. Thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. This is a 1.2mm nozzle, so it's going to make these parts really chunky and really tough. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, all these parts are printed in Pro PLA+, so they should stand up. I printed a lot of those because I didn't really know what I was going to build exactly until I got here. But anyway, we're going to glue those onto the end of the wood, so that most of the structure is 3D printing and wood. And then we're going to screw those on, and I'm using Gorilla Glue here, which is the foaming type to fill all the gaps, and wood screws as well, so they're nice and strong. What are you doing with all these toilet plungers? We've um, got a serious blockage. Ruth's house is um, it's just really quite, like, quite problematic on the sewage front. So, um, yeah, just going to... Uh, Roof has a, a mansion with um, 54 blocked toilets <laughs> and that we're going to simultaneously unblock them all at the same time. Uh, yeah. And if you want to know what all these toilet plungers are for and check out lots of other crazy inventions designed by kids and built by the Kids Invent Stuff YouTube channel, then check out their channel and I'll put the link in the description and a card in this video. My plan for this build was to make some sort of tensegrity structure. Tensegrity is the combination of tension and rigidity. And I did a video about this before, essentially it's a structure of sticks and cords which suspends itself in 3D space, so none of the sticks or cords are touching each other. NASA prototyped a robot like this which could roll along by changing its geometry. They also said that it could probably be dropped on a planet and absorb some of the load, so I'm hoping that this sort of configuration will make quite a good protective structure for the crash test dummy. I thought I'd try bungee cords first, so here's a bunch of bungee cords I bought off Amazon. Jimmy B said hold this and then ran. We live here now. <laughs> We're part of Jimmy B's assembly. And then he said erection. When it's this big, it's pretty hard to put together by yourself because it's not something you can just support with your extra fingers. Obviously these bungees aren't really tight enough, so we're going to have to either use lots of them or think of another idea. I'm waiting for some new straps to arrive, so I've been helping kids invent stuff with uh, putting their <laughs> dome together that's made out of bamboo and rubber. We're going to drop it off a crane. It's going really well. I decided that ratchet straps would be a really good idea for this structure. We need 26 cords, plus some to support a seat in the middle, so I had to wait for three packs of 10 Amazon Basics ratchet straps to arrive. So here we are reassembling again, but I'm trying not to take too long because Ruth and Sean really need to get on with their own build. 
So we've got most of them in apart from two straps. How's that feeling? Surprisingly solid. Yeah. Perfect. There's lots of loose tails and none of them are the right length, so we need to adjust it, but it's definitely getting there. I think these ratchet straps are a good idea. So that should be all of it together, so now it should be totally rigid. Right, you can let go. Or well, at least we can it will tip over. Gently. It will tip over, but it should stay <laughs> in one piece. It's a ball. Just roll it. Just watch some parts. This way, underneath. Yeah. Yeah, I need to adjust the spacings and then the seat's yeah. going to fit in the middle. There should be 1.6, no, 1.1 metres between all of those yeah. and all the straps should be 1.3. So you'll bolt it onto here and then maybe like attach the top of the seat to that. And I'm just going to suspend it in the middle with more straps yeah. and bungees. Right, let's uh, tidy it up and see what we can get. The ratchet straps, of course, can be adjusted to any length and they need to be 1.3 metres roughly. So I just went round measuring them all with a tape measure and evening the whole structure up. And then I tied off all the ends so it's not so messy. Not sure if I'll cut those down or I might just leave them tied up. But that's looking pretty good. It's looking like a pretty rigid structure I can pick up in one go. And I'm pretty hopeful that if I suspend a seat in this and put a person in or a crash test dummy, that actually if we drop them a little distance, they'll probably be okay. It seems like quite a tough springy structure that will take quite a lot of the load. And I can climb right up on it and there's no problems. So you can see that none of the wood is touching any of the other wood, all of it's suspended in space. Obviously the ratchet straps meet at the corners on the ends of the pieces of wood, but those don't touch each other either. So what we've got here is a proper tensegrity structure using 6 sticks and 26 cords. I need to be quite careful with the 3D printed loops that I've made to make sure they don't take too much of the load. So the strap should go round the wood and that loop should just be there to stop it slipping down the wood. Some of them the strap is on the actual loop there like that one so we need to be quite careful that they're not getting pulled too much. I'm using the red seat which I borrowed straight off another creation so if you've watched my channel you'll remember the omnidirectional ball wheeled vehicle. I bought this seat on eBay, it looked like it was probably the right size but when I got it it was massive so I just went with it. So we're going to use that again. I've suspended the seat in there the best I can using another 6 ratchet straps and that brings the total of ratchet straps to 32. So I've suspended it in the best I can into this 3 point or 6 point structure. You can pick it up though which is bad because when it drops it's going to just hit the top. So I've put some bungees in wherever I can holding it down to the bottom 3 points of the structure. So hopefully that will stop it going into anti-gravity. It looks pretty springy together so I'm quite hopeful about this at the moment. This is a time capsule from the future, but before we find out how that happened, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is PV Case. Now, PV Case is a next generation AutoCAD based piece of PV software focused on automation and accuracy. It allows you to simulate the actual location of a solar plant from the earliest stages of planning, incorporating 3D topographical data points. So, PV Case is the ideal choice for companies undertaking large commercial and industrial projects, as well as utility scale plants. The software is really intuitive and has streamlined processes to help reduce the learning curve and improve productivity. Features include everything from the prototyping stage, electrical design, stringing, shading and terrain analysis, and automatic generation of construction documentation. So PV Case really does enable the engineers and designers to take the project all the way through from its initial conception to the procurement phase. This really is an end-to-end -end approach which saves time and reduces errors. It's streamlined so you don't need to switch between tools or other software platforms. And PV Case has recently acquired Anderson Optimization, the world's most popular solar sighting software platform. Other features include slope analysis, piling and collision analysis, automated topographical 3D cabling, side-by-side -side design comparison and rapid 3D building preparation. Try PV Case for free by following the link in the description to this video. Right, let's get back and find out what happened to him. Right, I put the seat in, which is sort of suspended in here. It's quite hard to put a five-point harness seat into, I don't know, three or six point tensegrity but um, I think the dummy might get its face smashed in um, but I can't put it much lower because it's gonna obviously go down and hit the bottom and there's not really space for its legs I'd like to turn it a bit more I don't really think I know how to because it doesn't really fit but I think it seems pretty solid I mean something will happen now I can just chill out because I've finished so we shifted everything overnight and now we've reassembled it all down at the test site 
I swiped some thick industrial rubber left over from the kids invent stuff build and I zip tied it onto the ends of my bits of wood here to make rubber feet. And the hope is there the wood doesn't split if one of those hits the ground really hard, although we're testing on grass so I think altogether it's going to be fine. I've also put some cushions in to make it more comfortable for the dummy. I'm just checking the fuel level because the last thing I want is for James to go in the air and get stuck. This is what you'll be using today. This is the Genie Lift S60. So this is like a professional use bit of kit. It's not, it's not your gardening sort of stuff. This is for like putting roofs on massive industrial buildings and stuff. And I just happen to have one. Yeah. And you need to use it. So here you are. Right, how's it going guys? Are you nearly ready? Yeah, we're just um, attaching our commode, as you do. So you've got toilet plungers and um, a foldable portable toilet for it to sit on. We like a good theme. We like really committing to a theme. Where's the toilet roll? We actually left it in the workshop. <laughs> we forgot about no. It. Toilet roll. no toilet roll holder? No, we did have one in the workshop, but we forgot it. Okay. And are you feeling hopeful? Oh, always feeling hopeful. We, we're feeling hopeful, but we've been dissuaded James, what, by yeah, your what pessimism. What do you feel about our, our thing, James? I think it will, it's got a lot of crumple zones that will absorb the load. Yeah. So obviously it's down to whether the crash test dummy is okay rather than the structure. Yes, I think the So we'll see. Is... Mine doesn't really crash easily. What we've done is we've designed uh, an egg drop machine that really is, it reflects our engineering style, but really the true test is going to be whether the mannequin that you've created survives. So we've shifted the burden. If anything. That's the idea. The same <laughs> as the egg. It's all on you, James. These have got to be winched in the air now, so I'm tying some ropes onto the three points that stick out the furthest at the sides, and I've got a carabiner there so I can winch it right up. And I've got the dummy installed in the field where we're going to be testing it, looking pretty comfortable on the cushions, so I'm pretty hopeful that he's going to have a nice ride. Doesn't like my weight, yeah. And your weight is about the same as that's going to be. I'm amazed at that, isn't it? Sure, it doesn't need to be pulled down at an angle because that's how the thing goes. Sean brought one of those quick release things, but we couldn't get it to release with his weight on it, so after a bit of messing around with different cords to pull it and some WD 40, we finally got a good test out of it. Right, you want it? Yep. Right, up, up, up. That's it. That's it. There, about there. So we're doing a one metre drop test just to see what happens, about a metre off the ground. Okay, a bit higher, just a little bit. It's about two foot there. Tiny, tiny. Uh, yeah, about there. That's it. So looking at the data in your favourite spreadsheet programme, we can see that we've got some constant 1G of gravity, which is correct for the accelerometers facing upwards. And then we've got the ribs had bungees on them holding into the seat, which is why they're constantly measuring something, at least on one of them. Then we've got the anti-gravity part where we drop it for a short amount, a big spike where it hits the ground. And then we've got lots of mess, but that basically is the bounce of the whole structure for a short time till everything settles back again. I felt fairly confident having done a short drop so we took the crane up to 10 metres and I measured the height by just flying the drone up parallel with it and looking at the altimeter on the display on my handset because we didn't have a tape measure long enough basically. Here's the data for that drop, we can see we've got a longer anti-gravity period because the drop was longer essentially, a big spike where we hit the ground, a little bit of bounce but not so much because the structure actually failed this time, and then some constant measurements afterwards. And it looks like we only just got to over 8 Gs which means it would have potentially been survivable by a human. So 8 to 9 Gs is what a fighter pilot might experience. But what was it that broke? Well, it wasn't the 3D print and it wasn't the straps, it was actually that timber, which is CLS construction timber for doing stud walling. It looks like there might have been a knot in one of those pieces at least, and that was the weak spot, which is where it broke. But it looks like those 3D prints, every single one of them, is actually still intact. It's a bit like when I made that cast a wheel bike and the steel broke, but the 3D printed steering column stayed in one place. So it does show that making those parts with a 1.2mm nozzle makes them incredibly tough. 
so that's pretty impressive really, and it looks like the dummy's mostly in one piece. Apart from he did lose one hand, but they are only artist hands for posing and drawing pictures of hands, so it's not surprising really. But yep, his Lego face is in one piece and everything else is perfectly fine, no stab wounds and all of his legs are still in one piece as well. Uh, if you didn't think it was very high, it's quite high, it's very high. He's lost a hand from the fall from Jimmy B's, but he's still good to go. Here we'll we go. Squeeze him in, now. <laughs> squeeze uh, him in and strap him into the commode. Where's he going? So next it was time for Kids Invent Stuff to winch up their toilet plunger and bamboo invention and drop it. So they decided to do just one drop to see what happens. But if you want to see what happens with that, you'll have to watch it in the Kids Invent Stuff channel. So go over there, check out their version of the build, what eventually happens to their creation and all of their other projects as well. All right, that's all for now.